Hey, I'm Amy Ellis and this is So Modern Quilts. My goal with this channel is to inspire and educate quilters and aspiring quilters just like you with tips and tricks at the sewing machine from my years of experience. I thought we would talk about pressing your fabric and pieces and you'll notice I said pressing and not ironing and the difference is subtle but it can make a big difference in the grain of your fabric and the results in your quilt and so it's important to not alter the the weave of your fabric by pushing your iron too hard against it and so I have you know some of my favorite tips and tricks and the first one being my favorite iron and I've been using this Olisa Pro for a couple months now and it was given to me to use in my studio but the reason I love it is because how hot it gets and it really does a great job of getting hot it does take a little bit longer than some of my other irons have to get hot but it stays hot longer and it really does a great job of of getting my pieces pressed so but you will notice I very rarely put water in my irons and this is because I've learned not to trust them, which is really unfortunate, but a lot of irons, if they have water left in them, it will corrode them from the inside out. And then you end up with that gunky residue on your fabric. So I've learned if I want to use water or steam, I'd much rather just spray it on myself. And these are some, a couple of basic inexpensive spray bottles this one's really nice because it has a, a really fine mist but this works just as well too i've also used a lot of starch over the years i will say that you must starch before you cut your pieces if you cut after or if you starch after you cut your pieces your they could shrink you're likely to have smaller blocks than what you had when you originally uh, cut them so and the reason we like starch is because it kind of locks all the pieces all the layers of fabric together and makes it nice and crisp but make sure don't start it on this project that you're currently working on start with the next project and before you even cut your fabric go ahead and give those fat quarters a good starch and then press them and then cut and you'll notice it's an, a nice crisp cut when you get it there's less fraying I've used everything from the grocery store starch to flatter to best press all of those work really well I tend to be really sensitive to the fragrances so lately the last year maybe two years I've just stuck with water because I'm still able to get the results that I want without the aggravation to my sinuses one more thing that's really important in all of our pressing is setting your seams. Before I even um, open a seam up, I will press it just as I've sewn it. And this is called setting your seams. It allows the fabric to lock around that thread that you've just invaded its space with and making it more of a single unit. It also helps keep your seams straighter as you're pressing because you already have that locked in loaded. I have a variety of pieces that I stitched up just to show you how I like to press them and we're going to get started with some pressing. All right, so first up we're going to look at strip pieced uh, units and we're going to first set the seam with the hot iron and set, a, a, I like to do a few at a time, it's just a, another time saver that I do because you can get more than one in a pass with your iron. And I'm also really careful not to push my fabric as I'm doing so, as I'm setting my seams. And then once I have decided which way to press, um, a lot of times your patterns will come with instructions on how, which way to press. A lot of times it is just to the dark side, to the darker fabric. But if it has uh, more specific directions, then you will want to follow those so that your seams line up the way that they're intended to. So then I'll add the next one just below it. Now when you're strip piecing, you might be tempted to just 
sew all five or ten units together, however many you have going on. But I find it's important to stop and press between each edition so that you have the best results. And what I mean is this. So if I didn't press between each edition, the likelihood of my my seams, you know, my next seams being wonky are much more high. So now these are ready to go back together or sew together again. And they're nice and flat. I'm not going to have to wrangle the pieces at all. I'm just going to be able to stitch a nice clean quarter inch seam allowance right down that, uh, that, that edge. Now when I'm pressing half square triangles, it's a very similar format. So I have a half square triangle video and we talked about how this edge here in the center is a bias edge where there could be a lot more stretch. And so I tend to set, well I always set my seams first and then I carefully push the iron over the next, in the next step. Just carefully running it over. And I'm not moving it a whole bunch, I'm simply just pressing. And since it's already set, I can just keep adding another one, right after the other, and move forward. And then I will let my iron rest on top of them for a moment and really get a nice flat piece. And another thing you can do after you've pressed is lay a ruler on top of your pieces while they cool and this will help them to lie flatter as well. So pressing your half square triangles, doing them all at once. If you pressed one and then moved it, press one and then move it, you're touching them a lot more, you're more likely to have some frayed edges. So I like to keep them moved as little as possible while still getting a nice crisp press. And I'll do the same with these. And if you have directions that say to press towards the background fabric, you would press in the opposite direction, just like that. So, and this works for all sorts of things. I really like just a nice firm press on the blocks to make sure that they lie flat. In some cases, you'll be asked to press your seams open, and this comes up on occasion in different patterns for different reasons. Um, most often in mine, I like to press them open if there's not a set way to lay them out. So I set my seam and then I lay it um, face down on the mat and I like to run my edge of my fabric or my iron, that little nose, until it kind of pops open. And that way I'm making sure that I'm getting all the way up to the crease, to the seam, and I'm not adding an extra fold to the fabric. So and then I always turn it over to double check my work as well and give it another good press. So this will require you to move your pieces more as you press them. It's not terribly difficult to get a nice crisp seam as you press your seams open. So you just have to give it a little bit more time there. And I will stack these up to the side and still give them another press afterwards. And half square triangles are done in the same manner. We'll just pop them open here. Let's make sure you can see that. And then <laughs> it does take a little bit more effort I find than pressing to one side. It's not necessarily as quick, but it can be done. Oops, see, I gotta watch that. Let's do that once more. They're really cute once they're done. So face down on the board, and then we're just going to 
pop this one open. They're kind of on the small side and my nails are short right now. <laughs> and go ahead and run that iron over. Had I used starch before I cut these, I would have an easier time at opening those seams on the back, but there they are, it's all set. All right, well, I think that just about covers everything. Let me know in the comments if you have something special, a different method that works really well for you. I would love to learn from you guys as well. I've left links to all the products that I've used today in the, the show notes below. So make sure to check those out if you're interested in anything that you've seen me use in the video. I hope you'll hit subscribe and stitch with me again next week. I'm looking forward to some more new patterns and quilt alongs in this space in the coming months. And I would really love to do that with you. So I will stitch with you soon.